Here's a controversial topic. What is better for wedding photography? Prime or zoom lenses? Fundamentally, there are two main differences between primes and zooms. And the first is focal length, where primes are fixed, meaning that a 35 millimeter prime lens has a 35 millimeter focal length, where zooms can be adjustable. So a 24 to 70 zoom lens can have a focal length of 24 millimeters, 25 millimeters, all the way through 70 millimeters. Now there's no such thing as a right or perfect focal length for a particular shot. It's all up to personal preference and intended vibe. There are several right focal lengths that all lie within an acceptable range. For example, think about the 35 millimeter focal length and the 50 millimeter focal length. And essentially you can use those for most everything and there's a lot of crossover and it all kind of depends on your own personal preference. However, there are wrong focal lengths for some scenarios. For example, it'd be very hard to do group indoor shots for a wedding using an 85 millimeter lens. In the same way, 24 millimeters is probably too wide if you're trying to get a close up of the ring exchange. Zooms are more adaptable and they can transition from wide to tight shots with just a turn of the dial whereas primes sometimes have to pause in order to make lens swaps. The second difference between prime and zoom lenses are that primes oftentimes have access to a wider aperture like f1.8, 1.4, or even 1.2, whereas zooms are typically limited to 2.8. In other words, primes are more versatile in low light, and they can create more background blur, which can be useful for subject separation. So which would you rather have, versatile zooms or creamy primes? Well, if you are a beginner with a tight budget, the near universal answer is that you should begin with primes. I mentioned this in my essential gear for new wedding photographers videos, but budget primes are better than budget zooms. This might be a personal opinion, but I believe in order to work professionally, your image quality has to be better than what any guests can do with a cell phone or a budget lens. Now, image quality is one of the least important characteristics of a photo when you compare it to other things like composition, lighting, and directing, which we'll talk about later on, but it still accounts for something. Again, this is my personal opinion, but there is a threshold of image quality that your images just have to hit in terms of sharpness and have a little bit of background blur. Essentially, all primes meet this threshold and f2.8 zooms are sure to meet it as well. Now compare that to a budget variable aperture zoom, which isn't overly sharp, it isn't very bright either, so that would be very difficult to use in an indoor reception where it's pretty dark. And on top of that, the aperture changes every time you zoom in and out, so the exposure is constantly changing, which would be a nightmare in the editing room. Realistically, I would rather use a 50 millimeter f1.8 prime than any zoom lens that is five times the cost. But let's say that you're not a beginner and you have a sizable lens budget. Do you invest in zooms or primes? And does it actually matter to your clients. Here's a list of a whole bunch of things that clients care about in terms of wedding photography. And out of all of these, which ones do you think are actually affected by your choice of either a prime or a zoom lens? We talked about image quality already, and that includes things like sharpness and appropriate bokeh, and micro contrast and noise and a whole bunch of other different characteristics. But also like we mentioned, image quality alone will never make a fantastic wedding photograph. No one's ever said, wow, that is my favorite image just because it is so sharp. A client just cares that your image quality is above a certain threshold that is better than their guests. And all modern pro primes and zooms reach that threshold. After that, there's really diminishing returns and primes might have perhaps a 3% edge over zooms. It's a similar story for variety, where zooms have a slight edge this time, maybe 3% again when everything else is equal. Zooms are quicker to transition between wide and tight shots, and when time is tight, you might be able to grab a few more frames. And it's easier to have an appropriate focal length for a particular shooting scenario where a prime user might have to swap lenses. But in practice, there's not much difference. The remaining things that clients care about don't have anything to do with primes or zooms. We have composition, which is how you use different elements like leading lines and frames and the rule of thirds and foreground and background elements. Lighting, are you able to find good natural light? And how do you handle dark receptions? Directing, can you take charge? Do you give good instructions and prompts? And 
Are you a good communicator? Soft skills. Do you make the clients feel valued and appreciated and understood? And are you easy to work with? Editing. Do you process your images light and airy, dark and moody? naturally, or do you have your own particular style? Print rights. Can your clients use the images however they please, or are there restrictions? Authenticity. Do the experience and the photos that you provide feel natural and true? Creativity. Are you able to think outside the box? In other words, your clients who are the final judges of your work don't care if you use primes or zooms. Any minuscule gains you make in one department are washed out in the next. So, it doesn't actually matter. But at the end of the day, you still have to choose a lens. And which do you choose? Whether you are on Team Primes or if you are on Team Zooms, I think your choice just comes down to how you see yourself as a photographer and how you express your personal values. Basically, it's just a branding and identity decision. I'd say that Prime users tend to think of themselves as artists first, and they prioritize things like quality and intentionality and artistic purity. In a time crunch, they're willing to miss a shot or two in an attempt to get the most out of the images that they do get. On the other side, I'd say Zoom users tend to think of themselves as business people first, and they prioritize efficiency and flexibility and variety. In a time crunch, their biggest fear is missing an important moment. With all that said, instead of declaring your loyalty to primes or zooms, there are hybrid options that actually give you the best of both worlds. For example, you can mitigate a lot of the prime adaptability issues by using two separate camera bodies with different prime lenses on each. Purchasing a dual camera strap like the Moneymaker from Holdfast is a must if you go with this option, but essentially it allows you to easily use two different cameras, one with a wide lens like a 35 millimeter and one with a tight lens like an 85 millimeter and you can swap between the two very easily. If you want a more prime look from a zoom, you can invest in a specialty lens like the Canon RF 28-70 f2.0. Now, this is the route that I've personally gone, and I've been really happy with the results. You could also go a true hybrid model and swap between a versatile prime like a 35mm and a tight zoom like a 70-200. Another option would be to use zooms for must-have moments, and then you can have a top-tier prime like a 50mm f1.2 for portraits or low-light receptions. And there you have it, that's what you need to know about primes and zooms. For another controversial topic that might not be as important as it actually seems, check out my recent video about which camera brand is best for new photographers. Other than that, I hope you learned something today and thanks for watching.